The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody, and thank you for joining us for this, our fourth uh, webinar of the 2023 season. We are so excited to be here uh, talking with you about demystifying subscriptions in SAP. So I'm excited to have uh, my team here, uh, and I am really so excited to have Sarah Thompson here. Sarah, welcome back to the uh, the meeting. And there appears to be, let's see if we can, hang on everybody, we're having a little bit of, I wanna make sure we're recording. Well, we should be recording. I see a small button there showing to stop recording. That means it's recording. Okay, it is recording. And I just got a strange message. I apologize. Everybody got a strange message from the system saying something was going on. So now we're good. So again, uh, thank you all for joining, Sarah. It's great to have you here all the way from South Africa. So um, thank you for joining us. And I'm excited. Um, Navneet, this is going to be our first official webinar together, but we've done a number of videos and uh, other items. So we're excited, Navneet, to have you here from Toronto, Canada. Thank you, John. I'm excited too. All right. Looking forward to it. So uh, talk a little bit about the agenda. We welcomed uh, Sarah and um, Navneet who have been doing a number of different really great presentations about the integration of BRIM or quote to cash and revenue recognition. Uh, we did a several of them. Uh, Navneet did them in the Insider recently and we're excited to share some other things. We'll talk about why do we want to demystify subscriptions and how you deal with subscriptions in SAP. Um, we'll talk about them as a spectrum. We'll dive into the three options you have, and then we'll show you a demo of how uh, SAP subscriptions are integrated into revenue recognition. Just a quick couple of housekeeping items. The session is being recorded. Uh, so you can check it out in a couple of weeks um, in YouTube. Uh, we will have it up on the website, so feel free to go check it out there. Uh, and you can do that uh, at any time. Um, you can ask questions throughout. There is a chat panel available to you uh, in your logon screen or in the screen that you're using. So feel free to ask questions and we'll try to get to those. I have uh, Niraj here who can help me with some of that and we'll make sure we get through our, our questions. Uh, and then I encourage you to go check out our other webinars. And, and how can you do that? Well, you can do that by coming to bramasall.com. We have an entire library. You can see a little ad here for our webinar. Uh, but you can check out our library of different solutions. You can check it out not only now by uh, solution area, but you can check it out by industry. So if that follows, uh, you can come to Facebook. Um, we have some podcasts. Our Insight to Action podcasts are available through Apple iTunes. Uh, as I mentioned, we have 250-plus uh, um, videos available through several different channels. So we've reorganized our YouTube to provide you with video channels that you can go check out different playlists and different play channels. And, of course, we're adding uh, content to that. Uh, every day and updating it. You can go to iHeartRadio for our action podcasts, uh, as well as checking us out on LinkedIn. So why are we here? Well, we're in part here because of a, a thing that we believe in, which is the digital solutions economy. And if you've been on our webinars before, you'll know that the digital solutions economy is really all about enabling companies to enable their customers to be in control. Uh, and how do they respond to driving, uh, how customers want to uh, deal with them on a regular basis, whether it's starting with the entire quote to cash process or the record to report. Um, it's about commerce and engagement, quoting, supply chain and logistics, billing and invoicing. How do you collect the money, manage it and, and, and check it all, check that you've been paid and collected that money. And of course, reporting and compliance. And a lot of times we talk about focusing on the quote to cash and really focusing in on the end of that spectrum, which is the cash. How do you record all of it? But today we're going to take a little bit different perspective. Uh, and why are we going to do that? Well, we're here because many of our prospects and customers come to us when, number one, they want to add a subscription business model but aren't sure 
uh, what tool they should use in SAP. Uh, they've added subscription models, uh, but not sure that the tool they're using is right. There's three different tools. There's different ways to manage subscriptions. We'll hear about that. Um, some of them come because they've been doing subscriptions one way and they need more flexibility and growth. Um, or others who are uh, managing uh, with too much manual intervention. So I mentioned the idea of quote to cash. Maybe Navneet, you can talk a little bit about uh, SAP solutions, uh, and this is an example of private cloud. Of course, there is a similar structure for this in uh, the public cloud environment. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, solutions for the quote to cash. Yes, uh, thank you, John. So this uh, the the diagram shows like you know all the the whole product suite for SAP's quote to cash earlier called as Brim, but now the SAP has rebranded as quote to cash by adding the CPQ functionality in it. If we move from the left hand side to the right hand side, uh, so it's starting from the entire gamut of processes in the quote to cash management. So you have the different product uh, offered by SAP, which fits into that particular process. So you have the charging pricing uh, quoting mechanism, which is the CPQ for the quotation management. Then for all your uh, uh, product engagement, customer engagement, you have the uh, subscription order management. Uh, for all kind of charging, uh, one-time charging, recurring charges, usage charges, you have different uh, products available. You have uh, SAP conversion mediation, uh, mediation, SAP conversion charging, and uh, then moving on to the next step in the process, which is the billing and invoicing. For that, uh, we have the SAP conversion invoicing, and for all kind of customer financial management, that means like the you know, payment runs, dunnings. Uh, for that, we have the FICO module. And then, like you know, it uh, in the end, like you know, it all of that, like you know, it feeds into the SAP Gen Ledger and for uh, revenue recognition. So this like whole suite of products. So when we talk about quote to management, management, there's not one product; it's a whole suite of products which gets the job done and it helps to enable any companies which wants to move into this. Space. Okay. Well, thank you, Nefni. That's great. Um, and of course, it is a spectrum, so we're moving across. Let's talk a little bit about, we're focusing in on this idea of subscriptions and how do you manage them. Um, Nefni, why don't you share with us, you know, you have some interesting statistics that we that we heard recently. Why is this so important now? Yes. So that, that's why, like, you know, why why is subscriptions uh, so uh, so important? So it is becoming more and more a very important part of the economy. Currently, like, you know, I pulled in some data uh, widely available from various sites. So you can see, like, almost 53% of all software revenue as of 2022 is generated through subscriptions. 78% of, like, you know, the global population, adults in the global population have a subscription service. In the US only, 42% of men and 28% of women have three or more subscriptions, each one of them. And it is estimated that the currently the subscription economy, which is around 270 to 80 billion dollars, will grow into 1.3 trillion dollars over the uh, by 2035. So these are the forecasts and might be like, you know, it uh, might be still conservative, it can be even more aggressive. So this like, you know, shows like a you know, few data points why it is so important part and why companies are looking to move into the subscription space. Sure. And 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 not only is it a huge uh, opportunity from the perspective of, you know, the, the market growth here, we're showing a 5x market growth uh, over the next almost 10 years or so. But, you know, as you've pointed out before, at an individual company basis, why is it important for them? Um, this is a pretty compelling story here. Yes, John. So I pulled in some data from Market Watch. So it gives example of two companies, uh, Adobe Systems and Intuit. So, uh, like you know, if you look at the Adobe System on the left hand side, it shows like the stock price and uh, the x-axis is the time frame. So from 2000 to 2012, the stock price of Adobe was kind of stagnant. It was moving in the same range in the zero to fifty dollar range. Then in around 2012-2013, Adobe uh, went into the subscription model. They stopped selling physical CDs. They started selling cloud subscriptions. And if you see like what happened to the stock price, the revenues and the stock price, it zoomed. From within a five-year period, it almost like you know, was a 6x jump. 
Uh, and then similarly for Intuit, Intuit is the accounting software company. So till about 2011, the stock price was stagnant because they were doing one off sales, uh, not focusing on the cloud or, uh, or recurring revenue stream. When they adopted it again, like, you know, there was a zoom in the stock price. Uh, it almost went up five times in a period of, you know, short period of five years. So this is kind of a big endorsement of what happens to companies when they move from uh, when they move into the subscription model. Got it. So not only is there a tremendous revenue opportunity, but the value being added, the the capital value, the valuation of companies has just been amazingly impacted. Absolutely. Um, so why subscriptions with quote to cash? What what are we talking about? Yeah. So this actually like the why subscription with SAP quote to cash? What is SAP quote to cash? Why like you know why would a company like you know want to which is looking to move into the subscription phase look at the SAP quote to cash? Basically, what else is required from a good subscription management software? The ability to have uh, manage the subscriptions. So you have like you know uh, so it should be able to manage the entire gamut of the subscription lifecycle. That means starting from the subscription onboarding of the subscribers, the renewals, the terminations, the suspensions, the various uh, events, upselling, cross-selling, providing opportunities to the sales team for that. So the whole management of the customer lifecycle so for the subscriptions is uh, done in a seamless manner in quote to cash. Then you have uh, uh, the ability to forecast revenue. So uh, that that's one of the key things why companies want to move into the subscription that the ability to have recurring revenue gives them the power right. to forecast into the future making it a very predictable revenue stream uh, then you have uh, the ability to have very flexible pricing mechanisms because the nature of the subscription economy is that you have to tailor your prices to individual customers to different type of uh, corporate groups and based on the geography based on the different uh, like you know uh, customer age groups so all this is possible in quote to cash sap's quote to cash provides you a wide range of tools and very flexible pricing models which enables you to do this kind of uh, flexible pricing which will uh, engage your customers mm -hmm. then another point we have is uh, it requires it has provides a very wide customer engagement that means that you can have different, uh, uh, like you know, you can have different pricing models, like you know, for not just for your individual, but for your corporates also. Something like you know, LinkedIn, which has, you look, they have different. They have a quarterly, annual, monthly plans, and they have different plans for individual students. So this increases the customer engagement, and this is what Quote uh, to Cash provides. Then you have uh, full integration with the accounting system. All the billing documents generated by all the quote to cash subscription products provided by SAP, they fit so nicely into the whole SAP ERP ecosystem. So they have, like, and it enables like the billing documents generated by these modules flow into the SAP ERP and other functionalities like revenue recognition, customer financial management, the, like your payment runs, running channel ledger posting, all happens like seamlessly. Got it. And then lastly, I would want to talk about the master data integration. Since uh, uh, there is like in a wide variety. You have your products, you have your customers, then you have the various billing documents. If you use SAP Code to Cash, all this is seamlessly integrated. So all your customers, products, billing information can be seen in one page. And this is provided so across different systems because SAP is this is like an SAP, all this comes pre-integrated. The various solutions talk to each other. So you can pull in data and then have one consolidated view of all your uh, customer data, financial data, billing data, product data, accounting data. Right. So you not only are you able to match together and look at the different customers, you're able to look at your different uh, subscriptions or subscription types um, and have a revenue forecast that's all based on the latest data because you're using um, tools such as the Universal Journal to provide you with that instant, real-time, single source of the truth, then, right? Exactly. You know, and it's, I would also say, I like the flexible billing. Um, let's remember that when we say the word subscriptions, um, you know, that's, that's, I think it's more like when you said recurring revenue, um, because subscription, I think everybody has a, a picture in their mind of a, a subscription, right? I sign up for something, I pay a monthly fee. Um, but 
it can also be all kinds of different subscription style recurring revenue models, whether they are uh, consumption based, uh, outcome based, usage based, combinations of those different uh, elements in terms of um, you know, a baseline fee that's a subscription, but with a usage layered on top of it, and maybe there's some consumption. It can combine hardware, software, and services together. So it's actually a pretty, you know, the idea of being flexible is so important, I think. That's right, John. So like, you know, if you look at uh, a telco, uh, like, you know, telco service, that's a prime example of a subscription kind of business. So you can have your phone plan on like kind of a monthly plan and you can have your, uh, the internet to your home on an annual plan. You can have like one-time charges when you download a movie and watch, so you pay down uh, one-time charges for it. Or you can also have, if you want to go and play a game, you uh, pay based on the amount of uh, bytes consumed. So you have all this kind of different revenue streams, and but all of them, like you know, you can be handled uh, in like you know, in one solution. Oh, yeah. Advantage of. Yeah, and Sarah, just a quick note. I, I know you're seeing a lot of this because you do all all of our amazing demos, and I, I am amazed at the number of different industries um, that we're seeing out there in terms of companies using subscription or consumption-based models, right? Yeah, a lot of the companies are heading that way. Um, so it's not even just companies that have started that way, but it's a lot of, you know, businesses that are established that are moving that way. Absolutely. I mean, even things like medical devices and security are using consumption models that require something flexible. So, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time to be doing this business. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I get up every day and I get excited about what new, you know, uh, business are we going to hear about and you know, uh, we were on a call early this morning with a company that sells huge medical devices and moving to more of a, a, a an interesting sub subscriptions for some of their consumables. So fascinating. So with that, what we promised you is to talk about demystifying billing plans and subscriptions. Um, and <clears throat> I just threw this chart together because I thought it would be very interesting um, in terms of teeing up our discussion. Uh, and really, SAP, you know, has three basic tools. And I know that one of my colleagues on here says, well, why can't I use some sales and distribution? Well, certainly you can. Sales and distribution is an absolutely viable product um, and is a powerful product for certain types. Um, whereas subscription billing has some flexibility. It's a cloud-based solution. And then we have subscription order management. So I'm going to turn to our experts uh, Sarah and Navneet to kind of unpack that and help everybody here really understand um, when do you use these tools, how do they work, and and what's what's the best tool to apply uh, for the next challenge for the next thing. So um, SD billing plans. Let's dive into that. Yes, John. So you put it perfectly. Like you know, it's not as if a customer who has an SAP ECC or as for Hana wants to move into the subscription space has to necessarily move into BRIM. That is not true because SD also has a, uh, like ability to enable subscriptions. It has a, a wonderful tool called the billing plan. So uh, like, you know, it has like, you know, it's available like to standard customization and you can play around and you can do like a lot of things with it. You can have different billing types on it. You can have, uh, you can uh, link it to via the item category to the uh, SD, uh, the sales document types. You can have different dates. Uh, it can has, it provides like you know, a lot of flexibility on that. Uh, the, it has its own challenges that uh, it is not very, it is probably suitable for a tr traditional, like, you know, standard business model, which has like, you know, not very complex. Uh, maybe like think about like, you know, maybe you have your, uh, like, you know, uh, your uh, insurance, or maybe you have, uh, car dealership, things like that. So it has like, and there are not many volume, like, you know, maybe like in you know, a few thousands or like, you know, tens of thousands of uh, subscriptions. And uh, there is not much of uh, complexity in the pricing. So once you have a price, it is stays there. So for that kind of simple model, uh, your, if your customer has already has an SAP, he does not need to go into, uh, go and implement BRIM, full stack BRIM. They can do make do with their existing billing plan functionality in sales and distribution. Then I wanted to show the in the billing plan functionality, which is in uh, available in the conversion invoicing module of the BRIM solution. 
so this like you know it uh, it's meant for high volumes like think about a netflix think about a itunes which has like you know millions of subscribers you have uh, it provides very flexible billing and invoicing but means billing flexible again like you know talking about different kind of uh, billing frequencies can be weekly you can be daily it can be you know quarterly and then customer specific some customers you can only do it based on like you know for three months some you do it every month some they want uh, invoice on demand it supports like you know different uh, type of uh, partner resettlement again think of a scenario where uh, you have a netflix so you pay some subscription fee to netflix but netflix also has to settle some revenue with the content providers and then it supports also like you know complex uh, customer hierarchies think about a situation where a company has uh, offices all across the us and then they need to uh, get invoices and then roll it up at the company header level and then maybe apply some discounts also so for that conversion invoicing is an ideal product for that because it is probably the the one product which provides you an end to end solution it gives you the ability to uh, have uh, design recurring charges one charges on the billing plan and then it provides your billing invoicing functionality and then it segues into your your uh, sap erp for your all your financial management the other uh, interesting uh, module here is the conversion charging so uh, when i say conversion charging billing plan it is not called as billing plan in cc it provides the same kind of functionality so there is something called as the recurring rate functionality in the conversion charging box the conversion charging has uh, like in, it's probably like you know it has some limitations in that it is uh, it is not uh, public cloud it is pr uh, private cloud and it does not provide any billing and invoicing functionality but it what it does is that if you want very complex kind of uh, pricing that means like let's say like you know, the com a company wants to have uh, usage and recurring charges in one invoice you want to to have prepaid models wherein like you know the customer pays up front and then there's a daily burn rate wherein like some amount is debited from the mm -hmm. bucket uh, every every day then you have like location based like you know you want to charge a cust uh, provide a different rate to a customer based in arizona versus somebody who's based in california or you want to uh, give a different rate based on the age of the customer you want to give it special prices for your uh, student uh, customer things like that so for that Conversion charging is the ideal system because it provides its pricing complex pricing tree mechanism provides you a lot of flexibility in designing complex pricing scheme. But again, I would say it is not for everyone. Uh, for uh, people like our customers who are looking for simplified plans or who don't have a very complex business, or for them probably it's not, not not the right tool. But for high volume businesses which have like lot of complex, lot of uh, different pricing models, and they are catering to wide geography of customers then convenient charging is a solution one should look at yeah or tier you know tiered pricing models are 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 very well handled by convergent charging where you have different tiers of charges based on whether you go up in volume or down in volume and whether it's retro it's i'll call it retroactive or pro and, and it does it change if you go up a tier it reprices everything or only prices that tier all of that flexibility is built in here right that's right and also like i uh, talk about cross product discounts like you know you if you have right. let's say like you know you have a already a phone service and if you take an internet service from the same company then you get a discount of that so based on these kind of complex uh, cross product or upsell resell kind of opportunities like they're easy to configure in conversion charging yeah and and then also the other thing that you mentioned i think i want to emphasize is also it, it's able to gather information from multiple sources um, it doesn't have to just be coming from a single SAP solution. Many of our clients have multiple sources of this billing information, and this brings it all together into one place, right? Yep, that's right. That's right. So it is uh, like you know, it, it provides. It can like you know, you can feed in data from multiple sources to it, and then it will do. It's all based on your configured pricing tree it will do the metering and charging for it or generate the recurring one-time charges for it and then throw out the, uh, the billable items okay great okay uh next coming to the subscription billing so subscription billing is a new entrant in the sap score to cash uh, product suite it is a public cloud only uh, solution and it is ideally uh, for ideally positioned for customers in the mid market segment who are looking to go into the subscription business who don't want to spend too much to go into the and like you know go for a full brims implementation 
who have probably like you know we have customers who have already have a existing sap ecc so they have explored the bearing plans there but they know that okay maybe like you know they want a little bit more complexity so for them like subscription billing is kind of an ideal solution it combines a lot of the functionality of convergent charging and subscription order management that means you can create subscriptions on it and you can create different pricing uh, uh, tools uh, uh, schemes on it like you can have again like one time recurring charges uh, one time charges usage based charges you can also do like a lot of the complex things which you can do in convergent charging one can do in subscription billing also that means like you know tiered based uh, tier based parabinter based pricing and and the fact that it's a a public cloud based solution is a really great way also for companies to think about if I'm an ECC today, but I want to, I know in the future, which we all know at some point, everybody's going to have to move to S for HANA, but I can, I can get the power of a cloud-based solution that is then easily migratable in terms of moving, allowing you to move from ECC to S4 and still use that same tool, right? That's right. And because it has, it comes pretty integrated with uh, S4. Not all with ECC, but it comes created with S4, so it provides like you know nice, uh, easy to migrate if you are moving customers looking to do that kind of migration journey. Great, um, and we're going to talk about subscription order management in a little bit when we get into the demo. But you also have subscription order management as a tool for the entire life cycle, so really managing. It's sort of the uh, the heavy duty tool for this, right? Yeah, that's right. So subscription is. It's like the it's the I would say like the master of all the customer data and that's where all the subscriptions are created where all the products are created uh, and all the like you know you can do all your different customer hierarchies on a product bundling so all for that uh, subscription order management is the tool for right okay so let's do a little quick compare and contrast here. Um, Take me through okay, that. Okay, so yeah, yes. So uh, if you look on the like, uh, I'll just quickly explain the table. So on the uh, columns, like the second, third, fourth columns. Uh, so SD stands for sales distribution. CI is convergent invoicing. CC convergent charging, and SB subscription billing. So uh, like, what are the features? So if you have looking for in advance, in arrears, proratable kind of price plan. So all the four uh, systems uh, provide that. If you provide want to have flexible billing that means like you know you want to have uh, monthly uh, you, or you want to uh, different billing for different kind of customers and uh, for corporates individual customer different so for that like you know sd is not that great but it is possible in ci cc and uh, subscription billing then discounts so if you want to give discounts to the customer so both sd and ci provide basic kind of discounts but if you want, really want the complex kind of discounts then conversion charging and subscription billing are the right tools for it. Then frequency. So in SD, you can do like yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, up to daily levels. Similarly for CI, but both CC and subscription billing, you can go down to even more further depths. Like you can do even at hourly levels. So you can have like you know, a scenario where like you know, maybe you have a IoT kind of uh, service and for that you want a very fast kind of uh, invoices to be generated. So for that, like, you know, CC subscription billing. So I'm just saying like in the whole gamut of all the different kind of scenarios you can think of, SAP has a product which will meet that need. Okay. Then the complex pricing models. So as I said, SDCI are not that, uh, you obviously like out of the box, you can always have, they have user exits where you can go and then customize it. But out of the box, they don't support too much of complex pricing. Like, you know, as John mentioned earlier, complex pricing, we mean peer based pricing, margin pricing, parameter location based pricing. For that, again, CC and subscription billing are the right kind of tools for it. Uh, for supporting uh, prepaid hybrid kind of models. So, again, like, you know, not uh, much support there in SDNCI, but in CC and subscription, mean, yes. Then uh, if you want to do kind of revenue sharing partner settlement, right. then it is possible to do it that in the CI conversion charging and subscription billing model. Yeah, and that revenue sharing is one we're seeing more and more. They call it revenue sharing or in-app purchases. And of course, you know, a a Apple is, it was a huge pioneer in that space, um, but we see more and more um, companies working with Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, all different kinds of uh, even even telcos, right? You, you're selling yeah. um, Discovery Channel through a telco um, who offers a complete package of phone, internet, 
and cable service, you have these in-app purchases uh, either for subscription style in-app purchases or a purchasing of individual shows, which is becoming something more and more uh, interesting, right? Yep, yeah, you put that perfectly. So, you know, these kind of uh, different kind of revenue sharing models, because these are very complex and it varies. Uh, there's not one standard fits all. It depends from company, it depends on the industry. So, like, you know, one industry can have, like, you know, revenue share with maybe one or two partners, or you can have industry like, you know, Apple, where yeah, the revenue sharing is with multiple partners, and then, or maybe multiple level of partners also. So, right. all those kind of complex uh, kind of pricing schemes is uh, supported in the SAP. Award. Maybe you can comment also on royalties because we're starting to see more and more where where customers, in particularly what's interesting is watching uh, the semiconductor industry who is um, evolving to share uh, and license some of the software uh, or the foundational capabilities available in their software platforms. Um, for example, NVIDIA, a client um, of ours, you can license the software they they drive you know um, create these recognition software that helps drive you know uh, autonomous vehicles right uh, yeah. John, i'm glad that you brought it up because again like royalties sap has its own royalty management uh, functionality also but it is uh, the kind of model which you uh, described that is also like you know very much possible in the sap world because the whole fact that like you know, the order is getting created in your system, so you have all the inputs into it, and then based on the parameters on it, you can do various kind of design, various kind of pricing models around it. So that is very much uh, feasible to do it in the code to cash ecosystem of SAP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have some positioning here, and I'm just going to kind of build the slide out here. I hope, all right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, John, if you go one by one, then yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so here I put in like the different modules and and if a customer is like again like you know as you mentioned in the beginning a customer is confused okay like you know where, what should I do if an existing SAP customer like you know and they have a very simplified subscription revenue model like you know and um, they want to go into subscriptions but they know that they, uh, uh, the customer base they have or the uh, the current products they have don't justify a big investment into buying us different subscription management software for that. SAP SD is good enough for it. Its billing plan functionality is good enough for handling that. Then you have conversion charging. So where like a you know, customer is moving, looking to move into subscription business, uh, and it knows that it has a very complex business. It has it has a mixture of uh, recurring charges. It has a mixture of you consumption based, and it wants then it has to invest into the uh, the BRIM platform. And for that, like uh, again, uh, an example like you know, of of this complex revenue requirement can be like another you know, toll industry, or like you know your uh, your uh, courier industry, where the the price of the, of the thing which you are object, which your freight, which you are uh, sending over to the destination depends on the type of mode of transport taken, the countries it passes through, the different uh, various groups within the uh, ecosystem who handled it. A great point. Where that's a that's an interesting industry that we've just started looking at, which is transportation. Whether it's, um, you know, ocean transportation, uh, rail, trucking, or as you mentioned, intermodal. And each of the pricings and charges are different for each. Yet you have to bring that all together uh, to a single bill, if you will. And you start with many different processes, with way bills and estimating, and then you have to go through the entire process, and it generates tremendous volume also, which is why um, tools like BRIM and CC are so powerful here. Okay. Uh, then uh, talking about convenient invoicing. So this is a tool where the customer wants an end-to-end -end kind of solution, which uh, like not just gives him the ability to uh, design, configure uh, billing plans, uh, recurring charges, but also has provides billing and invoicing functionality. And then it also uh, comes pre-integrated with your ERP, with all your general ledger. So for that, convenient invoicing uh, is the ideal kind of solution. Again, if the, it is uh, meant for customers who have like very high volumes and they what they have to invest, and it comes in both private cloud and public cloud version. So that is uh, the one big plus point about it. Yeah. And when we say volumes, we're talking tens of millions of records almost every day. I mean, this is a huge, this is what 
large insurance companies, telcos, and others are using to help power some of their activity together with FICA, right? That's right. I'm talking about like you know, tens and hundreds of millions also. <laughs> John, yep. like, you know, we yeah. have uh, customers on Brim platform who have hundreds of millions of customers, and there are like you know, uh, like you know. <laughs> you can't even imagine the amount of transactions which are flowing through. Uh, right. Yeah. Billions. Then I'm coming to the subscription billing. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, meant for customers you know, who are looking for not medium kind of complexity, some already uh, business best practices built into the system who want to move into subscriptions uh, in the recurring revenue stream, but also like you know, kind of looking for guidance. Uh, it's a cloud, public cloud only, and uh, the good thing is it comes pre-integrated with your SAP module. So if you already are on S4HANA, it comes pre-integrated. So you can always create subscriptions, revenues, uh, products on it, and then it feeds uh, into the invoicing capabilities of S4HANA. Fantastic. Well, that was that was very helpful. Thank you for that, Navneet. Um, I understand you and Sarah have cooked up a little treat here for everybody to see. So, um, Sarah, how? How does this all actually work and how do we integrate it together with revenue recognition to provide customers with a real end-to-end -end view of um, their subscriptions? That is a great question, John. Let me go ahead. We are now seeing your screen. Perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna start by creating both, Nandi and myself, we're gonna kind of walk you guys through creating a subscription order and following it all the way into revenue accounting. So this is your uh, standard subscription order theory screen. So we create the subscription order by uh, ent enter the required data in it, uh, choose the subscription order transaction type then we uh, feed in the other data, the business partner, in the item uh, item section, we feed in, we uh, create the, feed in the product, product ID. So this uh, populates your, uh, all the details linked to the product, the uh, billing plan, everything is gets uh, linked to the product. Then you also attach a technical resource to it. This is meant for if there's a consumption related scenario. So there needs uh, like example can be like, you know, in your phone subscription, your phone number. So that is the example of a technical resource ID. Then once this is done, then you need to uh, just play around with the dates. You want to choose to uh, start the contract at a particular date and particular time. So this is again like one functionality, which is like, you know, very like in you know, a powerful available in Brim not there in other uh, platforms that you can choose the date and time. And you feed in the organizational data, which provides you all your sales tax and uh, other uh, channel information for it. So now the subscription order should be ready. Then we can submit it. So once the subscription order is submitted, it should get uh, result in the creation of a subscription contract. So the subscription order uh, contract gets created in your uh, and this will also link uh, link uh, create a uh, link to the creation of the provider contract in S4 HANA. So we'll go to the provider contract screen, the same uh, ID gets generated. So the provider contract object uh, is the object which is created in convenient invoicing. So it has all your uh, data, which is relevant for invoicing, for uh, revenue accounting. Um, so there uh, it has the billing plan is mentioned there. So as I mentioned, like, you know, this is linked to your product. So when your product uh, was added, so the billing plan also got automatically added to your provider contract. So we'll go ahead and then gen, uh, generate some, uh, execute the billing plan to generate some uh, billable items. So this like, you know, we it's configured to have a recurring fee of about 30 bucks as in uh, Indian currency INR. So we choose the date and then uh, it generates some billable items. So the billable items get uh, generated uh, and then they have, uh, will get transferred into the convergent invoicing box. 
so the by the display billable item screen we search for the provider contract billable items are configured to be created in the raw status if you want to do some kind of gives them the flexibility to do any kind of modifications before you want to transfer them I might have made a, an error on the first one by not putting it at the beginning of the month. Yep. You can pick another contract for an existing contract. Bill just not invoice. I'll go ahead and invoice this one. Yep. So while you're doing that, um, <clears throat> what this question online, which of the options do we have helps you manage the overall renewal process? For example, um, automatic, you know, um, automatically create a new customer, offer a month before the existing uh, subscription expires, right? So if you have a subscription, you want to know when they're going to expire. Um, you know, which of the tools does that? Um, I, I think. I know the answer, but what's the what's the answer to that, Nefty? Some module. Okay, so subscription order management does that. Does subscription billing allow you to have automated notice of expiring subscriptions? Yes. Also, yeah. Yeah, it does that also. Okay, so the the answer to the question is both uh, the subscription billing and subscription order management, or BRIM, um, are are the tools that can do that pretty well. Hopefully that answered your question. All right. Back so to Sarah. I'm gonna go back and just double check on our provider contracts just so that it makes sure it looks the same because we're switching to 182. So what happens once we take our items is we go ahead and take a look at our transfer items. So for contrast 182. So we can see here we've got our items that we can transfer over to revenue accounting, but they haven't been transferred yet. So we have an item for the contract, we have an item for the invoice. So this is going to give us all the items that are available um, that we'll be going to take a look at from the revenue accounting side. So there is a batch job that can run for your transfer between um, uh, between revenue or subscription billing and revenue accounting. So this can be run as a as a batch job. So what I'm just showing you what a manual process would look like to come in and do it by contract, but this would be something that would go in and gather all of the subscription orders that are relevant for revenue accounting, and it would just run all of those orders at once or as often as you need a batch job to run. Uh, but I'm gonna specifically do it just for one contract here. Go ahead and schedule our run to run immediately. And we can now see that we have completed our jobs and transfer that over to the revenue accounting process. Now, for those of you who are familiar with revenue accounting, what happens is you have an inbound process for all of our items um, that are relevant for revenue accounting reporting. So if I can go ahead and capture everything from contract 182 that we created out there, what we're going to see is we're going to see our order and our invoice. Um, both available. You'll have error notifications if anything um, doesn't line up from the subscription side to your revenue accounting processes. Um, but we can go ahead and start processing over our items so that we can create a revenue accounting contract. Um, 
usually these processes don't happen back to back where you're creating an order and creating an invoice at the same time. Um, so I'll process one at a time. So I'm gonna process my revenue accounting contract for my sales order, and then go ahead and process the invoice as well. So it knows which revenue accounting item um, to actually put the invoice on. So from here, we can actually drill into our revenue accounting contract that is created. It gives us a revenue accounting contract um, for our subscription order. So this is gonna be, uh, we are looking at contract 182 now. It's still loading. Um, but I can drill back into the provider contract. I have the same cloud subscription with the total price of 730. And if I get into my revenue schedule for our subscription order, it's going to showcase that we have our cloud subscription of $30 was invoiced for this month. And then the amount of that 730 is rounded out by month um, and giving us our Seven or our, um, 730 total over the next two years, broken down into different amounts um, based off of the um, the different types of um, fulfillments that we have for time based. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the different distribution methods that we'll use um, to be able to to showcase the different revenue that we have. We can always drill back into performance obligation type or information and actually drill in and see the information that comes directly in, but there is no replication that needs to happen on the revenue side from the subscription order. It automatically flows through. Those last two processes that we saw were transfers. Those are batch jobs that will happen automatically. Um, and so as soon as the subscription order is created um, and it is accounting relevant uh, for revenue, it will create your, your revenue accounting contract. Awesome. And I think one of the keys here, Navneet and Sarah, is to note that everything that's, that you're looking at here was inside of S4HANA um, and that the master data that's being used, whether it's talking about the, the plans or the customer, uh, is all the same master data. So you um, reduce significantly the amount of activity you would need for reconciliations. Uh, and other end of month or period close activity. So by having an integrated system like this, it flows together, you can see the linkages. Um, but you can also, I think, see the importance of understanding and why it's so important to think about <clears throat> the downstream systems. Because if you think about what you just saw is the creation of a subscription with a specific customer that flowed down into the various elements and through into RevRec, What you need to to have is a very clear picture of that process, so that they're unique, so that they're linked, and when they all flow into the GL, you're crediting and debiting the appropriate accounts. But also that the processes are are linked together, so that you're calling a cust the same customer the same thing in two different places, and you're understanding where your data and volumes come from. So, um, you know, it's great you know, to see that integration. Uh, we'll continue to be showing a lot more scenarios, so stay tuned to see more consumption-based. Um, Sarah, I believe you and Nafneet are working on a new scenario for um, showing not only uh, service, but product service and, and other, other elements as well, right? That is correct, John. Awesome. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna switch back. Um, I will see if I can figure out how to share my screen here. Sarah, change presenter. All right, can you guys see my screen now? We can. All right, so I wanna thank you both. That was really interesting. And I wanna wrap this up um, pretty simply by talking about um, the reason we came here and we talked about this is often as the experts in uh, quote to cash and combining quote to cash and linking it to um, the back end, particularly revenue recognition, we get a lot of questions from customers about what really is the best tool for, for what I'm doing. And um, the answer is really, it depends. Um, it's about complexity and change. 
Uh, as you heard from Navni, SAP has, and I'll, I'll say three basic tools, and I'll, I'll refine my, my description on the right-hand side in a moment, but it depends on complexity and change. Um, and what I mean by that is how complex are the programs that you're setting up, the subscriptions? How complex is your database? Uh, how much is your volume? We talk about in revenue recognition, volume, velocity, density, and complexity. And you can use that same framework to address and answer these questions too. How big is your volume? How many do you have? Um, you talk about velocity. Are you? Do you need to do this monthly, quarterly, hourly? Um, density, how many elements are fit within here? You saw a fairly simple uh, explanation, but imagine in some of the larger subscriptions where they might have dozens, if not hundreds of line items, um, you want to use the tool that best fits that. And then um, really complexity. What are the interrelationships amongst all of those elements? And as you look at this, these tools, each one can help you with that, right? So sales and distribution, it's a familiar tool for many. Anybody who's been working in SAP for uh, any period of time knows sales and distribution, SD. So working with it is familiar. It's a very stable tool. It's been around a long time. It does come with core, um, so it's in there. But you don't have the opportunity to do a lot of change. If it's a set and forget, SD might be a great tool for you. Um, but on the other side, I have subscription order management, but Brim, we heard from Navneet talking about subscription order management, uh, convergent invoicing, convergent charging. All of those are highly flexible, powerful tools that can be combined in different ways, whether they're standalone or you can combine them. Uh, they are powerful tools with many different features, highly designed to be flexible and customizable, um, scalable from thousands to hundreds of millions, uh, and again, as I said, they're highly flexible and scalable. In the middle, if you will, and is, is subscription billing. Again, it's a very powerful cloud-based tool. Uh, it is a public cloud-based tool, so it allows you to interface, whether it's with ECC natively or not natively through standard interfaces with S4HANA, but you can also integrate it with other solutions as well. Um, because it's a cloud-based solution, it's based on best practices. It has a quick setup, quick time to, um, to value. Uh, and so it can be done much more quickly than some of these other tools. And it has the same integrated features. Um, you get with subscription billing, not just subscription management, but there's other tools in there in terms of uh, combining billing and invoicing and tools like that. And it can handle change in volume. So, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this conversation about demystifying um, subscriptions and subscription solutions in SAP. Um, look for our next series of webinars where we're going to continue to focus on really helping people understand the digital solutions economy. So I want to thank uh, both Navni and Sarah for their time and uh, the work put into this. I thought it was really great. So thank you both for all of that. Thank John for handing this. All right. Well, with that will wrap up. Thank you all for attending. Uh, all of you out there, you hung in there. Uh, and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you as an audience. Again, go check out this, this content as well as some great new videos that Sarah has updated uh, on revenue recognition and some really excellent content that Navneet has out there uh, on demystifying some of the BRIM components. And look for some more great. Uh, content coming from us soon. Thank you and have it a great day.